Welcome back everybody to She's Crafty. Today I am working on a process video for the 4 for 4 series from RTS Scrapbooking, the spring series, and you see the instructions that we have for layout number three there. So we are going to be using three photos. I know I have four printed, but that's kind of the way the Canon selfie, I had my page set up on my Canon selfie or my app set up. So I just changed out one photo and that was it. I have the papers out that uh, Janet has said to use on this layout and it's really kind of cool because she tells you what size to cut all your papers and you don't know what layout you're going to be doing at all. Um, with those, well, at least I don't know what, I don't, I don't pre-choose photos to go with the layouts. I just run with it in the order that she gives us the instructions. So I'm getting the papers out and I, you see me laying out my three patterns that she has told us to use. And now I'm like, okay, I have set patterned, um, paper for my backgrounds as well, which you see right there that I'm like, all right, which ones go best with these, uh, with these specific pattern papers that she has assigned to us. So it's, I mean, I really like the, um, I guess the confines that she is giving us. I and mean, working within confines, I guess like you work with what you have and you stretch yourself creatively that much more. So anytime there's a challenge in Anything that I do in scrapbooking, I always enjoy it more. I mean, I'm a challenge junkie with online challenges. So, I mean, I have a series that's that I'm doing with Scrappy Kathy called Challenge Accepted. So, yes, I'm very challenge, sketch, whatever you want to call it, driven. So, here I'm using my Handy Dandy Creative Memories Guillotine Trimmer to get my... Uh, photos to the size and the, the, uh, I guess the size that I want. And I'm trimming off all the white on these. The tricky thing with the selfie, I love the selfie. I have a picture mate, but I love the selfie more because my picture mate gave me, gave me fits. Anyway, so the problem is it's a four by six piece of paper, but not necessarily four by six prints that you have. So Sometimes I end up having to trim off the white space around it when I'd really like it because the white space oftentimes goes into the perforated edges. If you have a selfie, you know what I mean. You just got to work around it a little bit. Not a big deal. So I have the three photos and this is where I end up going, okay, how do I want them on my page? And the way mine printed is two of the photos are in one sitting of these girls and one of the photos is kind of in a different sitting setting whatever you want to think so the backgrounds look different so i ended up basing it totally on that basically um gold background kind of gray background kind of gold background just because it just was sitting better to my eye just the way i was looking so i'm going ahead and looking at this little half by 12 inch piece and going okay i guess it goes over there but that's why I instantly grab that little embellishment piece that that's on the right, that girl, because I know that I'm going to need to bring that navy indigo kind of color over to the right side as well. So I guess it just made it better for me when I was crafting to see what was what. I don't know. Let me know if you do the same thing, but it's like, okay, now I feel more balanced if I have the color over there too. So we are supposed to use it here and decide that I want to back these photos on a piece of white cardstock. And I believe that's just an eight and a half by 11 piece of cardstock. I really do like when I hear the British ladies, they call it card. It's on white card. That's like, I think Scrappy Nerd UK says card instead of cardstock. And it, it, seems just a little bit fancier the way she phrases that but I put it on white card and um, I will end up cutting it out as a block I use what is that called the cutter pillar 
pro or caterpillar crop, I think is what my trimmer is called. And it does light up. I just keep forgetting to put new batteries in it. Otherwise, it would be a lot more useful if the LED lights were nice and bright and I could see where I need to cut. I mean, it's, it's so funny how I will do something a thousand times and, or think about it a thousand times and think, oh, I really need to put a light in there, which will take all of like 30 seconds and I just still have not done so. What are you going to do? All right, coffee break real quick. My daughter brought me a coffee drink, my favorite coffee drink and from Starbucks. So I am just a happy girl to have that on my desk for the day. And also while I'm doing this, I am scrapbooking on with five or six, four or five of my scrappy girlfriends. We are on the Messenger app and for Facebook Messenger and they have a really good video um, Messenger. It's on Messenger and it's like you just, if you're in a group, you can hit the little video button and it will send out a call to all of your people and voila, you can be chatting with all of them and scrapbooking with all of them. So that's what I did for my third and fourth layout for the 4 for 4 series. So I do have it set up a little bit differently the way that this video is going because I was just chattering away and I just filmed everything kind of as a straight shot. I didn't do any kind of a like live intro before I went to fast forward. So I do cut out a few of these little Savannah Dreams, pretty little studio um, label stickers that I included with my kit. And I don't remember if I use them. For some reason, I don't think I do, but hey, this was a couple days ago and my scrappy world a couple days ago was like, you know, an eon ago. So what else can I tell you? I always do the 4 for 4 series when Janet puts them up. I absolutely adore her conversational style on her channel. And I love that she's on a spending freeze, but she's not on a spending freeze, but she is. Because if she gets a new product sent to her or a gift card, she'll go ahead and use it. So she continually comes up with with different uh, ways to use your stash and all that kind of stuff. So she is ever so inspirational. I have the, uh, the wax paper down on my page as I'm getting ready to make a title, but I know I don't make you suffer through the entire title because it can take me forever to decide what, or not what I want the title to be, but it'll take me forever to decide um, placement and nowadays it seems like you have to glue down every single embellishment so that will be kind of a snap of the fingers kind of thing when it comes to that part but I am starting to look at what I want the embellishments to be and all that kind of stuff I have a washi tape booklet that I have in my kit and I decide that I do want to use a few of the pieces that are in it I think it's a Dear Lizzie Washi Tape Book. No, it's Amy Tan. I am ever so corrected. All right, so we all know that they use so much pink, teal, light aqua, etc. in uh, collections that you can usually mix and match collections and get a little traction. But I do use a couple of the pieces that are in this Washi Tape Book just to give my... Uh, my photo block a place to rest kind of like a um a shelf a shelf is what i would call it so i do use just a few pieces on top of my pattern paper to give it give it just a little place for the eye to rest and the photo to rest yeah but that is called a shelf go me for actually remembering while i'm doing my voiceover and I have a thing about doing things in odd numbers, so that would be probably why I'm compelled to put three pieces of washi tape down. They are slightly staggered because that's my thing as well. I'd like to stagger my bits. And what else can I tell you? Let's see. This is where I start doing 
the the title mm -hmm. down and I do apologize for the glare. I have really good studio lights, which I love, but I also have a light right above my desk that gives me just that added little bit of light that I like. So sometimes we get a glare, but I, I think we can make it through together dealing with my glare. <laughs> it's not on purpose and I do see it, but I do, um, I like that extra little glow that gives me a true light color. So I apologize. I know it happens, but there you go. What are you going to do? So I'm going to go ahead and pop on my title right quick. And voila, it says The Girls of Phi Sig, I believe is my title there. And now I'm going to start working on what I have left of my embellishments. I think I started out with three packs. I have a Vicky Booten pack, a Dear Lizzie pack, and a basic gray ancient vintage pack of flowers and I also have this acrylic piece at the top it's called all the feels and you'll see towards my lower right I have these white acrylic little stars that are also part of those those are from a Jen Scow sketch class that you could order um, those acrylic pieces were a part of it as well as a really usable stamp so I start looking at these basic gray flowers and realize that a bunch of them work with the colors of, well, of course they work with the colors. I put the kit together, but a bunch of them are working for the feel of the layout. And like a lot of die cuts, I had to pop out those little throw away bits that were in the flower piece. And I'm starting to audition different colors to go on top of different colors of these flowers. And I'm telling you, about two-thirds of them worked from the pack, and I really liked them. So I've had those basic gray flowers in my stash eh, six, seven, eight years. So to use them and have them feel nice and fresh on a layout is a big, big win for me. As you see, I'm taking down the coffee while I'm chatting away to my friends. So I will end up layering them. And... In that pack, there was yellow buttons, like like lemon yellow buttons, and there was also um, tissue paper cut out that you could overlay, as well as kind of like a, almost like a stiffened tool kind of fabric. So I will bring in a little bit of that as well. You can see in the bottom left, in the middle of my tray there is the uh the tool as well as pieces of the um the tissue paper and you might not see it as well on the video but you do see it very well uh in real life it's just like this extra kind of ghost layer by my flowers that gives it just a little something i'm auditioning that all the feels again and it will end up making it onto this layout I've been wanting to use it before I crack it. <laughs> so and I've had it for a little while. The class was, it's less than a year old. I can't remember. It's the volume or number five of her sketch class series. So I go ahead and start popping these floral pieces on and layering them up. And I'm like, when will I just attach that photo? I don't know why it's not down yet. Because then it can tell me where I want all the rest of my bits to go. So I do use my tape runner to uh, put this, this stiffened tool kind of fabric down because I know I'm going to put something else on top of it and you won't see my little blue bits. And I do want to add more of these aqua and teal colors into my flower clusters so that they make sense with the, uh, with the rest of the pattern papers in my layout. And I go ahead and pop that up on a little bit of Zephan foam. And as always, I always end up apologizing to y'all for you guys having to hear a snoring bulldog in the background. I have my older bulldog is giving himself a absolute continuous foot bath five feet from me. And my youngest one who always needs to be touching me is wrapped around my legs, snoring away. But at least he's facing away, so I hope it won't be as loud. So there's the bulldog report of this video. So, finally realizing that attaching a photo that has been 
on this layout the entire time uh, needs to happen so that I can add the rest of my bits around it. I am using, um, I ordered two new rulers off of Amazon and they don't work as well as my older one that I picked up for like three bucks at Joann's or no, from Michael's. It's not working as well for my T-square ruler. Like it doesn't grip the edge of the page as well as my old one. I can't, I, I can't believe it. I'm like, come on. Like, the other one kind of like must have like a deeper edge or something so it grabs really quickly on the sides and it stays more stationary. The uh, glue I'm using to attach this acrylic piece is the KI Memories, it's called Glue and I've always said it that way because it's G-L-O-O -O, so it's two O's on it. I'm, I don't, I'm sure it's not even made anymore but let me tell you, I've had it for over a decade and it comes out of the container better than like diamond glaze that I bought a week ago. So I'm trying to use up that bottle because I also have diamond glaze. But yeah, it actually works better, but it dries and behaves exactly like diamond glaze that I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with. All right, so I'm grabbing out the bits that I feel go with the color scheme. The, uh, those green bits go with this piece of pattern paper in the Dear Lizzie collection. It's like this really great park bench green with true lemon yellow lemons all over it. And I did not bring those colors into this kit, so I have a lot of the embellishments left over. So I'm going to have to go ahead and uh, try to make a page around those leftover bits to work them in because it's a very distinct green color that is in this collection. So I go ahead and put that uh, piece of die cut down below my flowers and I'll end up using it as a journaling block and it works ever so great for that. And you'll see what I do. I go ahead and attach this little date piece down, which I believe I pop up yep, with some foam. And I end up having to move it for a minute while I'm in the middle of my journaling because because I need to uh, make my journaling go down another line and I ran out of room and you'll see how I do that in just a second but I do put the date down right on top of you know the the date ephemera piece and use just a little piece of twine in uh, the hole that's there I have this never-ending uh, I think it's called twine. I don't know. It's two-toned. That I have never-ending spool of it, and I think I switch it out because the colors just aren't quite right. Yes, like it even matters in the scheme of things. I don't even know if anybody even looks at my uh, layouts, but I did have this piece from some packaging or from a kit that somebody sent me that was the right color. So I said, hey, why not use it? I can use the white and gold on anything. It's these details that we all get caught up in and only us scrapbookers would notice them, but that's all right. It's just part of what we do as artists. We can be pretty darn funny. So I am taking a look to see what else I can use since we're getting, um, since this is towards the end of the third layout in this series, I really want to do my best to try to tuck as many pieces in as possible. I tend to be an embellishment heavy person anyway. So the more stash I can use means the more stash I can go purchase. That's my theory on it. So I'm trying to straighten out a really bad cut I did with my scissors on these cute little turquoise banner pieces. You know, I see ladies on process videos that do the straightest cut ever, but I have absolute terrible straight cutting skills when it comes to um, cutting with a regular set of scissors. So I tuck this cute little piece into the top that says Saturday yay because this was a Saturday that they all went out. I believe they ended up taking a party bus down to the city. The city that we call here is the city of Detroit and um, it's like a half hour away and so it's not that bad if you take a party bus or an Uber or whatever down and then just 
drop you right at the door right. and then you don't have to fuss and fight and worry about um, spending 30 bucks on parking. So what you see right there is I'm using my navy blue friction pen, F-R-I-X-I-O-N pen that I picked up at Michael's. Mm -hmm. I have it, the pen in gray and in navy blue, I believe, right now. And it is so bad because it is absolutely fully erasable and it comes out as a really good true navy and it has a little tiny touch of indigo in the navy if you're looking for a friction pen. The one that's supposed to be navy is like indigo navy, just just so you know. So I was able to erase a little bit and and move my little uh, date a die cut there and it ended up working out and yes my hands are flailing around while I'm talking to my friends and trying to decide how I want to add these cute little dear Lizzie puffy bits in if I could I would put every single one of them down I put the little house as they were at somebody's apartment but that works just as well it's actually a bunch of the sorority girls so i was also thinking of their sorority house which they're not at but that's kind of the way my brain works you know like what associations i can work with what i put a little clock on the top because time's moving on and they're all turning 21 so that's how i worked with that anything that kind of works and makes sense to me i will just go with so I also have, I think, gosh, is that Click Kits? I don't know. I have some exclusive stickers to the left that I keep trying to work little bits into my layout. And I am able to use um, a little sticker here and there. You see here I'm using some of these acrylic pieces with the KI Memories glue to uh, add acrylic to a few different places in my layout for it to make sense that I used acrylic. I like to repeat uh, materials and pieces in my layouts. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mason's really ramping up on his snore. I'm sure you're, you're hearing that mm -hmm. happening more and more. So this is the fun part of the layout where you're just adding those extra little bits, like the, the little tiny bits that make the layouts come together. This is where you put your enamel dots and your little, your little acrylic mm -hmm. pieces and your sequins and all those little bits that you have in on your uh, layouts, the finishing pieces, I guess we'll call it, the finishing touches. So when you see me layout after layout, aud auditioning the pieces that, sorry, you're, you're ending up seeing me um, scrolling through my camera real quick. I'm looking at photos, I think, to decide what I want to print for my next layout, because the next layout has four pictures. So I go ahead and grab out my uh, Heidi Swap little photo corners that I am in love with. These photo corners end up being like the thing that draws the eye to so many layouts. And I really want to start hunting for more and more photo corners because of it. I'm loving the feel. So next time I head into Michael's, I am going to try to pick up the uh, black and white photo corners at least because... Those are always like three bucks for a big old pack that they have on their shelf. I don't really want the clear ones. I want something that draws the eye to the main photos or whatever I'm trying to do. So you see me wrestling way too much to get this little photo corner. Uh, oh, and my hair is ever so curly. Sorry. Um, that you keep seeing. So, yes. Totally feeling the photo corners. Mm -hmm. I have got to stop about it. But the Heidi Swap ones are adhesive on the back. Mm -hmm. And they're very specific colors that are in it. There's gold, um, aqua, light pink, and like magenta. Mm -hmm. So I don't know why I'm looking at those. Oh, I know what I was doing. Mm -hmm. I am so sorry. I was showing the girls that I'm scrapbooking like the, uh, the colors of a kit I'm going to be using coming up for the mood board that we're gonna. Okay, I had to stop for a moment, but this is where I'm grabbing some Chamel very sparkly enamel little hearts out and finding three places to put them. She has this really great deep navy color that is in that Glitter Girl set, and I was able to use those in three places. 
and I have this uh, set of enamel dots. I am trying very hard to use up the last little bits in a couple of packages. Mm. And you would think it would be easier, but I don't know. Sometimes I struggle with it. So I'm putting the pieces mm. in that I can from there, trying to finish off mm. this layout, seeing what it needs before, before this one mm. is finished up, and getting ready to do my fourth layout in this series because I wanted to try to finish it all up in one day while while the colors and the patterns in uh, this kit are nice and fresh. I tend to work a lot better if I work on all of the same papers at the same time. So I am finishing up here. You can see that I'm doing my sticky note in case I want to do a layout share later. You can see the dimension that I have going on there and in my bottom cluster. And that's where I'm going to be finishing it up. So thanks so much for watching. I appreciate you guys and be sure to like and subscribe. I'll be back soon.